Hey guys, thanks for uh, coming out to my bar where I'm a cooler on my nights off from editing videos. Uh, it's really great. It's really great to have you here. What's a cooler? A cooler is in charge of the bouncers, Justin. So, you know, some nights I'm editing uh, rental reviews and Cinemasker stuff, and other nights I'm beating people in the face and kicking them out of my bar. Like <laughs> Kieran. He's uh, sadly no longer allowed at this establishment. He was, he was 86th? Yeah, uh, someone said Tia Leone was hotter in Jurassic Park 3 than Julianne Moore in Lost World, and he got into a fight, and I had to, I broke his nose and kicked him out of the place. Anyway, since we're on this topic, we should talk about the movie Roadhouse. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what did you guys think of the greatest movie ever made? Well, I know you are a Roadhouse apologist. Uh, I'm not an apologist. It's nothing to apologize for the greatest movie ever made. Yeah, I was a little skeptical. Uh, Temple of Doom is your favorite Indiana Jones movie. Oh. So I was like, oh, gee, what am I getting into here? What am I going to see? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and what happened? Well, I, I also want to uh, build this up a little bit that I, I have never seen a Patrick Swayze movie. What? Wow! Yeah, never. Because the only thing I've ever, well, seen parts of was Dirty Dancing. It's a great and movie, too. I was like... Because I, okay, on the school bus, <laughs> when Dirty Dancing first came out, yeah. there were these kids on the school bus that would bring in the tape, the cassette tape of the Dirty Dancing yeah. uh, soundtrack or whatever, yeah. and they used to play that same fucking song oh. on the school bus every day. Oh, <laughs> I mean, every day. Like, yeah. like, and, and the time it took to get to school was just long enough to listen to the song like two and a half times. Oh, Heard it God. every morning. And I'm like, you know, I am... I am banning Patrick Swayze for my entire <laughs> life. So, yeah, so I watched this movie and I'm like, I had no idea Patrick Swayze was such a motherfucking badass. Yeah, it's and so fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> And this movie fucking kicked ass. Like, I had no idea. Thank you, thank you. I've been defending this movie for a very long time. I mean, like, okay, this movie is built of three things. It's yeah. like, there's music, there's fighting, mm -hmm. and there's, like, strip tease and fucking. So it's like, <laughs> you got the, the yeah. violence, the sex, and the music. Yeah. And it's like, it's just this trashy, sleazy, yeah. like... I love it. Like, it is it's, just... It's really great. It's, um, and the filmmakers say this, uh, it's basically taking the Western formula of, like, you know, the hero enters town, he's got to face the bad guy, and... All that shit, and it even looks kind of like a western. There's a, there's like the saloon. Yeah, there's a yeah. few stores. I mean, the um, plot is basically there isn't much of a plot. It's basically <laughs> Patrick Swayze yeah. is like the head of like these bouncers at yes. this, the, this the cooler. Bar. Please, the cooler. the cooler. Yes. Is that because he keeps so, everything cool? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, pretty much, the bar is the whole like character of the film. Is just the yeah. place when the, the place is this hellhole, this bar that just people fight all yeah. the time. Like, if you walk into this place, you're guaranteed yeah. there's gonna be, uh, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's always a fight. Yeah. So, like, the, the plot is basically this uh, older guy, uh, his real name's Kevin Teague, I mm -hmm. think. I forget what his character's name is off the top of my head. Uh, even though it's the greatest movie ever made, and I know it, like, the back of my hand. Um, he comes into money, apparently, and he wants to fix up the Double Deuce Bar. So he goes to where Patrick Swayze is, Dalton, uh, basically offers him a shit ton of money, by the way. 5,000 up front, 500 a night cash. You pay all medical expenses. I can live with that. Um, so, but like, the thing is like, Patrick Swayze is supposed to be the best. Wade Garrett's the best. But he's bad at quitting jobs, because he just tells his boss, yeah, I'm out. It's like, wow, we want to give like a two weeks notice or something? Well, because this is a band in, in front of your new employer? Like, because yeah, he, I've known people like, like that. <laughs> he's kind of like the cowboy. Yeah. He's like, I'm off to the next adventure. Sure. But um, I really like Patrick Swayze in this. He's like the philosophical warrior. Oh, yeah. He's a fucking philosophy major from <laughs> NYU. Why that's in his medical file, I'll never know. But, um, but yeah, I like how in the beginning they show like if he doesn't, if he can avoid a fight, he will, which is the thing like real bouncers have mm. to deal with. <laughs> Okay, so here we are, let's go. Come on, hot shot. Come on. Come on, let's do it. Go, Dirk Ball, where you going? Go. Hey! Hey, Moose, hey. get back here! Dickhead! What are you guys, seven dwarfs or something? Get out of here! 
any other movie, there would just be like a 10 minute long fight scene in the mm -hmm. beginning. But don't worry, the fights are coming in this oh, movie. Well, not just and they don't stop. <laughs> so you get a bunch of fights. Yeah. You get uh, Patrick Swayze's butt. Oh, you yeah. You get uh, Sam Elliott's pubic hair. <laughs> you get a guy's throat torn out. Yeah. You get a monster truck driving through a car dealership. Mm -hmm. And you get a. Explosions, an explosions, <laughs> and explosions. <sighs> It's great. There's nothing wrong with this movie. I love it. I don't even know what to think of it. I was like, <laughs> this is like, this is awesome. Yeah. It's like, my, 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 my favorite. Speaking of his money, he, he goes to the farmer. The Yosemite Sam looking guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, the farmer. Oh, the farmer? To... Yeah. The farmer, he looks like the cover of the SNES game Phalanx. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 Um, and he, uh, his real name was like Sunshine Parker. I'm like, that's a mm -hmm. weird name. But like he's supposed to be this redneck farmer, but then he shows Patrick Swayze the apartment he built on top of a barn, and it's like this modern, like well furbished place. But he's like, yeah, uh, I'll charge you a hundred a month, and Patrick Swayze's like, I can live with that. It's like, what? A hundred a month? You make five hundred a night? What the fuck? Yeah, what a dick. Yeah. <laughs> I think even Roger Ebert didn't know what to say about this. Yeah, movie. Um, Roger Ebert in his review. Well, he was like, he thought it was hilarious. Mm. But he like says, if I remember right, he said, it's not a good movie, which I disagree with. <laughs> he's like, but uh, it's definitely not a boring movie. Yeah. And it's definitely you know not. What? It was like he wanted to trash it. Yeah. But he just but he could like, not. Could, he was like, you know, it was. Two <laughs> thumbs up. The, the thing about this movie, two broken <laughs> thumbs up. Like, a lot of movies are so bad, they're good. Yeah. Like, the room, whatever. This movie is so good, it's bad. Yeah. Like, there's so many great <laughs> scenes that it just makes no fucking sense. <laughs> Like, uh, yeah, I mean, literally, it's like, okay, and, and, you got a music scene. Sorry, I just kicked a trash oh, can. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I love how the band no. in the very opening is, who is it? It's the one from yeah, Dustin Cruzados. Cruz 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 but which who, became... the singer, the, the leader of, the, of Cruzados, who's the uh, you know singer and guitar player, uh, Tito, he formed Tito and Tarantula, yeah. which was the, the the vampire band in From Dusk Till yeah. Dawn. You know what? And this movie, Roadhouse, needed a human, like, skin <laughs> guitar. <laughs> Well, I swear, I, I, I don't know, I, this is very possible that Tarantino and Rodriguez were inspired by this film. Oh, probably. Because, like, it, it almost is like this bar is the predecessor of the titty twister from from yeah. Till Dawn. You could even say that band got eaten by vampires that night and yeah, went to Mexico. Vampires and then, yeah, I think they're connected. Like, there's some kind of, like, connection between these films. Jesus. Oh, yeah. but yeah, so it's really great. He goes to Missouri and, like, the double deuce is a dive. Like, there's, I love when they walk in, it's just, there's people fighting, there's awful pickup lines, like, let's get nipple to nipple. Oh, Fo yeah. Followed by awful comebacks going, I could do that myself. It's like, what the fuck is anyone even saying in this movie? But I love that there's just, like, a shirtless dude on the dance floor, and they got the wire mesh over the band. Yeah, I wanted to ask about that wire mesh, because I've seen that in Blues Brothers Oh, it's, also. Be it's because in like, Roadhouse, is, is if it you've seen the movie, the, they throw the a band. glass bottle at Jeff Healy. It was and, to protect the oh, band. Well, I know, yeah, the purpose, but that yeah. that cliche of, of the wire protection. I think band, that was just a that, real thing that happened. Is that like, so, okay, so when Blues Brothers did it, that was like 1980. Yeah. Um, that was already like a thing. Like I'm pretty sure we would have to talk to someone who worked at a bar at that yeah. time, but I'm pretty sure it's based off reality. Wow. Like with like real, like, you know, not great establishments. Oh, uh -huh. so there's two important things that happen when he, when Dalton first walks into the bar or yeah. in that scene. One, he goes up to the one girl who becomes a love interest for a second. Yeah, th that, that's one thing before you go. There's yeah. like the movie baits you into two love interests. One is Pamela Anderson, stunt double. The other one is uh, Lucy's sister from Twin Peaks, and you think he's gonna like be with one of them, and then like 40 minutes of the movie, you meet the, the doctor, actual love yeah. interest. It's so weird. The doctor. Right? Yeah, yeah, doc. Who I don't even think you learn her name till like 20 minutes before the movie ends. It's like Doc Clay, and then finally Jeff Healy's like Elizabeth. It's like that's her well, name. Her name's Doctor. She went to fucking medical school. Dude. That's true. That's true. Anyway, continue. So anyway, so uh, he goes up to the bar, and the girl goes, "Oh, do you have a name?" And he goes, "Yeah." Like a dick. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, and the bartender's like, hey, can you go bring these fucking drinks over? And it's the worst poured beer I've ever seen. <laughs> just, just take a look. You need to look at this fucking beer. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think about, like, uh, apparently he's such a good cooler that he's just known, like, worldwide. Like, he goes in there and says, uh, Dalton. She's like, oh my God, I heard about it. And she's running around like, that's Dalton. Well, like, did they know he fair, was coming? Like, the, the owner probably told him or something. Maybe. But, but uh, I guess there's this, like, this underground cooler bouncer circuit between all bars. Yeah. In the country, because he went from where, like L.A. or New York to like Missouri. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. And um, depending on what night you go to the Double Deuce, 
You can either get a phone call for a great fuck or a great Buick. You don't know. You don't know. Oh, oh it, yes. it, says, it says for a great fuck on the wall. Yeah. And the owner goes, oh, I better fix that. And I think he's going to write for a great truck. Yeah. Because it makes more sense because he just make it look like truck. But he went with Buick. Is this like a brand deal? Is this like a... <laughs> It's, it's, uh, it's just like Mercedes and Jurassic Park. My whole life, yeah. Uh, my whole life, I just wanted to know, is there... I just want a scene of just, like, a pervy guy waiting by their phone. And, like, they pick it up and, like, yeah, what's up, baby? And they're just like, oh, no, I don't have a Buick. Stop calling me for the Buick. The I town know. is kind of shitty, but then there's also a bad guy. Brad Wesley. Yeah, Wesley. Brad Wesley. I brought the ball here. I got the 7-Eleven. I got the photo mat here. Christ, J.C. Penny is coming here because of me. You ask anybody, they'll tell you. Played by Ben Gazzara. And this guy's a fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of the villain? Oh, uh, yeah, he was good. But there, I mean, there's a lot of, like, quick roles that are, uh, you know, that stick with me. Like, um, oh, Benny the Jet appears very briefly. Oh, um, yeah. But he is, uh, you say he, he'd actually train Patrick he, Swayze in this? He legit trained Patrick Swayze how to be, like, mm. a kicker. And he, like, Well, says, no wonder. Like, yeah. He, <laughs> and Patrick Swayze does great. Like, he, and I don't know how much, uh, when you watch behind the scenes stuff, you don't know how much mm. they're bullshitting. But he was like, I trained him to, like, fight and do these dance moves. He's like, he caught on like that. From that point on, he had no problem with any of the moves. Benny actually wanted me to start competing, wanted me to go on the kickboxing circuit. He actually compete with any pros. He is that good. I mean, that makes sense because he's such like, a good dancer and he's so athletic. That's the thing. He taught him how to fight by singing up the music because oh, he knew he was a dancer. And speaking of which, sure, he's like, a, he's like a, a fast, nimble, fighty guy. Yeah. But all the other guys in that bar are just like schlubs or being <laughs> fat. It'd be like if I was a bouncer. Yeah. I mean, I guess I can bounce, but I'm not a bouncer. You know what I mean? Like. Um, anyway, who else is in there? Oh, there's uh, Sam Elliott, of course. Oh, he's, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, you see movies sometimes where you're not too familiar with an actor, but you start seeing more and more films that they're in, and then you're just yeah. like, like, oh yeah, it's that guy, and then you start building up your you know, familiarity. Like Sam Elliott, he just um, got an Academy Award nomination yeah. uh, for Star is Born. Yeah. He's in um, The Big Lebowski, he's like, mm -hmm. you know, I like he's, your style, dude. He's you know, currently guy. in a movie called The Man Who Killed Hitler and then Bigfoot. Yeah. Which, if the title's anything like the plot, I need Did to you see that movie. Me? Did you just tell me two different titles? No, no there's one movie yeah. called The Man Who Killed so Hitler and then Bigfoot. Sam Elliott plays a guy who was a spy who killed Hitler in World mm. War II, but it was all covered up and whatever, and then now it's present day and he has to go kill the Bigfoot. <laughs> okay. 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 So we gotta check that one out. Definitely. Uh, yeah, so I, the other guy, there's a guy named uh, Kevin Ty, who's... Oh, that's um, the owner, right? I think so. I think yeah, I said he, Teague earlier, he's, but yeah. yeah I, it's Teague, Ty, I don't know. I think, um, yeah. He, I, I've seen him in a bunch of things. Uh, mm. What always sticks with me is the Tales from the Crypt episode, Cutting Cards. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was also John Locke's dad on Lost. I think a lot of people know him from that, too. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got a very distinct face. Mm. I mean, a lot of these these type of guys, they play, like, a certain type of character, but they play it really well. Oh, yeah. and uh, Keith David's in this. Oh, yeah. Keith David is fourth or fifth build in the credits, above a bunch of actors. He has, like, one or two lines of dialogue, and then he's in the background. For those who don't know, Keith David, fans of this channel, they know him as Childs from The Thing. And he's barely in this movie. Apparently... He had a whole subplot where, like, you know, one of the assholes in the town, they were, like, being real racist toward him and, like, trying to kill him or whatever. And, you know, Patrick Swayze saved him and then gave him a job at the bar. Okay. But that got cut out. So, he, oh. for some reason, he still builds so high in the credits, and it just comes out of nowhere. He's yeah. like, whiskey's running low. He's like, is that Keith David? What the fuck is going on there? Yeah, also, speaking of scenes that are cut out, watch watch Roadhouse and then watch the trailer. Yeah. They cut out so many lines and so many scenes. I was like, yeah. oh, I wish that was in there. Yeah. Hmm. So weird. My favorite part in the whole movie is when uh, Dalton is uh, training like these new uh, bouncers, oh, and yeah. uh, he, you know he's telling them like, okay, like somebody gets up in your face, calls you a cocksucker, you don't take it personal. Yeah, he's like, don't take it personal. What if he calls my mom a whore or something? <laughs> he goes. Well, is she? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, so well, funny. I, but, because the reason it's funny is because like, I mean, first of all, it's like, well. If she, you're the one who brought it up. You're the one who brought up that your mom's a whore, so is she or not? And then, of course, it just it just makes his point. It's like, well, if she's not a whore, then you shouldn't get you know yeah. upset about it. And it, I um, I really like I like that whole Zen thing that he does because the rules are mm -hmm. 
Uh, never underestimate underestimate your enemy. Expect the unexpected. You got to do a little hand movements. Yeah, but then he doesn't take his own advice. Yeah, he tries. He tries. Uh, never start anything inside the bar. Take it outside unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh huh. Which a lot of times just people brandishing knives and stuff. He can't really take it outside. Although he does. At one point he drags a guy outside mm. to fight him. And of course the third rule: be nice. Until it's time to not be nice. Is that a mantra you live by? Yes, yes. Be nice until it's the time not to be oh, nice. Oh, we haven't talked about your fucking hair. What's wrong with my hair? This is what I wear when I'm a cooler, Justin, at oh. this very real bar where I am the cooler. Right. <laughs> There's certain movies where the movie ends, it's time It's time to go, you're, it's done, whatever. Yeah. This is a movie where it feels like you're the one who's done. You're the one who's ending. <laughs> it's like this movie's yeah. still, like there, there's life that is still going yeah. on in this film. You're the one who's tuning out of it. And the guy's like playing guitar on his lap and everything, yeah. and then right, we, you know, it's, the credits on. are going on, it's like, well, should I turn this so, off or do it? it? It's like Last Call, but it's like, I don't really want to go home. I, but it's like, I don't know. Yeah. So uh, the villain in the movie, Ben Gazzara, Brad Wesley, He's kind of confusing, like he, he has all the money in the town, I guess. Mm. The businesses are paying him for some reason. He seems like a legitimate businessman who's bad at negotiating. Like, he, he's having problems with these small business, but instead of like negotiating and working out, he's driving monster trucks through them, or burning them down, or stealing their alcohol yeah. and stuff. Uh, but he's so evil that, you know, when he drives, he's got to drive all over the road. Oh, yeah. Uh, when he flies in his helicopter, by the way, he lives across the pond from Patrick Swayze. The good guy and the bad guy just regularly watch each other out the well, windows. It's, it's a very, uh, what do you call it, a, a Great Gatsby kind of thing? Uh, sure. Yeah. But uh, when he has the helicopter, he's got to make sure to go to his neighbors and fly the helicopter over the horses to scare yeah, them. I thought he was doing that because he wanted to buy that guy's property and he was just No, I think dick. he's just a dick. Yeah. And then, what does he do? He's, he does every bad thing you can think of. He has got, like, you know, coked out parties. Yeah. He's beating his girlfriend. He's, um, he hates 80s, like, pop music. Yeah. Yeah. Will you shut that shit off? He, yeah, he screams at it. Oh, he's killed every animal known to man. Oh, yeah. He remember, killed a polar bear. Remember when they go into his house and there's all the mounted animal heads? A polar bear fell on me. <laughs> but it, look at that room. There's like... There's like, there's a walrus. How hard is it to kill a walrus if you know where it is on the it, beach? Like, I feel like it's really easy. Like, well, there's so many elephant tusks. I'm like, what is this guy? What the hell is this guy? It reminds me of that scene from Ace Ventura 2 where he goes into the, 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 room, the, the, the lovely, lovely room, room of death. Of death. Uh, I remember when I was rewatching it the other day, I'm like, holy shit, he's got every dead animal in the world in here. He's like the anti-Noah. Noah's Ark. <laughs> the anti Noah. The anti Noah. I like that Noah's Ark killed the dead animals. So, but he's also got uh, some supporting villains. Uh, one is Terry Funk, professional wrestler Terry Funk, which I think we were talking about has the weirdest line. You know, I heard you had balls big enough to come in a dump truck, but uh, you don't look like much to me. You don't need big balls to come in a dump truck. To fill one, maybe, but not to, it was such a weird thing. I guess anybody could do that if they wanted to. I don't know why you would want to. I but feel like, like they ad-libbed all the lines, like just say whatever you want, guys. Like No, they did it because they, in the behind the scenes, people talk about how the lines were confusing to them. The line of, you know, we're gonna take a break, I gotta drain the main vein. I had never heard that phrase before. I thought then, and I think now, it's just stupid. <laughs> We'll be back in 10. We gotta drain the main thing. What is this movie about? <laughs> what, what is this, like, uh, the director just said it's a modern day western and it's cartoony. The, I, I they at least acknowledge how ridiculous it is. I will say the ex uh, executive producer of this film is Steve Perry, okay. not from Journey. Okay. And he also produced um, Speed 2. Good job. Good job, Steve. Good job. Keep going. Speed 2 Cruise Control and Under Siege 2 Dark Territory. I don't know that one too well. Oh, really? Uh, no. What's the goal? Wasn't there an eye stab in that? I'm not going to watch There is it. an eye stab. I'm in not going to watch it. Uh, so yeah, I'm make Speed 3. <laughs> <laughs> so there's uh, Terry Funk, who's pretty good. Um, there's Jimmy, who wears so much denim. The, like that, the, the guy gets his throat ripped out. That guy is just wearing denim the entire time. He's yeah. got that Darth Maul scene with the I think he the has pool. like a, a tusky thing as like a necklace too. Yeah, he's got he's like a tooth. such a prick. My favorite thing about him is that, um, the, how great was that fight scene, by the way? Yeah. On the beach after the explosion? Oh my God, he just kept on going. I was like, oh, okay. they didn't have stunt doubles he, or he anything. Like, he jumped on him out of dirt bike. I know. Uh, I was looking at how they like choreographed that. Like, 
that scene took forever to do because Swayze was shirtless and they had to keep putting makeup over his bruises because they kept like hitting each other for real. My favorite part of that fucking scene is when Jimmy's got Dalton and just for no reason, for no reason oh, decides to tell him. Yes. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. Why are you telling him that? Why, what, what, why is that important right now? What is that, like guys like what? Like nice guy, like people he's fighting? Like guys with nice hair? I don't know. And then of course he gets his throat ripped, which they foreshadow earlier in the movie. They talk about how he like, ripped the throat out, no one believes him, then I mean, it all comes way too fast when you're yeah. watching this. You're just like, holy shit. Like, there's so, there's like, so much in it. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, like... That was a hard one, because that was like, oh, that was so borderline. Come on, man, rip the guy's throat out. Are you really that bad? Um, Dalton is so badass. <laughs> Not only does he do Tai Chi on the beach, he can punch someone so well that they'll bleed before his fist actually even hits him. Like the one guy who like, they do a close up, his nose is already full of blood and then he gets hit. Well, Tony, that's a great review. I guess we don't need to talk about any, you know, personal films you made about this or anything. Oh, just end this. Oh, no, no, no. I would like to, James, I'd like to tell you, I don't think you've realized how much of a fan I am of Roadhouse. Okay. Uh, for a while, I had a real problem. I was like addicted to this movie. I, um, I actually filmed that scene for like an old review thing that I had. Cause yeah, for a while I wanted to do uh, movie reviews like Angry Video Game Nerd, you know, just. <laughs> so I made this review and I refilmed the ending of that fight scene. Uh, and I started working Roadhouse references into everything I was making. So I'm like, I need to get it out of my system. So I made a short film about two bouncers who become bouncers after watching Roadhouse. And they're awful. Like they're terrible at their okay. job. They're like quoting the movie. They're beating up innocent people. They're getting their ass kicked. Okay. And the movie's famous for uh, it features a pretty spicy scene between um, beautiful uh, model, among other things, Loretta Vendetta, and a Mr. Justin Silverman. And I'm sure he's very proud of that scene, right, Justin? Mm. Let's Thank play you. a censored clip right now. Ooh, washing dishes and hitting bitches. Whoa! Wow, Justin, you did a great job in that scene. I'm glad we filmed that day. I wasn't happy with my lines. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would have preferred drain the main vein. <laughs> Are we done? I want to talk more about Roadhouse. Oh, you want to talk about you, you want to talk about Roadhouse Two for a quick second? No, I never, I never want to talk about Roadhouse Two. So in Roadhouse, there's a Roadhouse Two. Oh, the bad guy. Yeah, there's a Roadhouse Two, and it's terrible. The bad guy is Jake Busey. Yeah, and he kills Dalton in it, like like off screen in yeah. the. Film. So, uh, you know, I know this episode's running a little long, but um, do you guys have any uh, cool bar stories that this movie might have reminded you of? Not this movie. I don't think I've been to any bars as intense as this <laughs> one, but... Um, I have a bar story with James where we're doing the Das Boot thing yeah. in L.A. That was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. We was... drank out of a boot, I guess. I mean, it's not cool. I mean, who guess... started that? Who, who was that? I, guess... uh, I think it was Jay from the Game Chase yeah. or something like that. They're like, hey, and then we broke up into teams of five and did the DOS boot challenge. Yeah. We won twice. <laughs> yeah, that was fun, though. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Yeah. I remember uh, Valentine's Day 2017. Remember that day? Oh. So me, Justin, and good friend of the show, Johanna, who's made a bit appearances in the show, uh, we were all single at the time, and it was Valentine's Day, so we're like, well, obviously, we gotta go to the strip club. So we went to the strip club. We had a fun night. It was a fun night. Yeah. Um, I got a couple dances. They weren't great. Uh, but <laughs> we're sitting there, and this this girl comes up and puts a card underneath Justin's elbow, like a playing card, like a bicycle playing card. And we're just like, what's that about? What's going on there? Yeah, so I realized... Like, so, so she put a playing card under my thing, and I'm like, what does that mean? Is she, like, a, stri a stripper here? And mind you, when I go, when I was going to strip clubs, <laughs> I just go to drink and hang out. I don't go do the dances. Like, I know that's, that's a Tony thing. Yeah, well, I, I know you're well-versed. And <laughs> so I get this playing card, so I'm like, please don't be the Ace of Spades. Yeah. And we're please don't be the Ace of Spades, because I know that means something. And I turn it over, and it's the fucking Ace of Spades. And we're, we're looking at her, like, talking to all these people, and we're like, huh. So I finally, like, asked the bartender. I'm like, hey, he just got a card. What, what does that mean? The bartender's like, I have no idea who that woman is. She's like, she's she does giving, not work here. She just showed up and just giving, started talking to people. She's giving everyone an Ace of Spades yeah. card. So eventually they try to, like, kick her out. The bartender, the, the bouncers, I guess the cooler got the bouncers on her. And she's just like fighting them off. And we're like, holy shit. Holy shit. The stuff's getting crazy right Super now. Super fight. Uh, eventually the cops show up and they pull her outside and we're watching the screen like everyone in the bar 
The dancer stopped dancing. Everyone just got around the screen. We're looking at the screen, and she just punched the cop like right in the face. She's taken down. Yeah, we're watching like surveillance <laughs> footage of them just <laughs> fighting the cop. It was the most insane thing ever. Eventually, they got in her car, and they're like, the story ends like we're finally like, well, that was nuts, and we're going to my car. The cops blocking my beautiful Scion XB, my beautiful Scion XB. <sighs> And I'm like, hey, officer, we uh, we have to leave. And he's like, oh, which car is yours? And I'm like, oh, the Scion. And he goes, oh, I wouldn't have admitted that. And I'm like, did you just make fun of my goddamn car? It was the weirdest goddamn So night. what happened was an ex-stripper of the club or something or yeah. some other random person yeah. came in to solicit men and stuff. <laughs> the sad, lonely people on Valentine's Day. And to, I, like, guess, I guess this fit the bill. <laughs> wow. Me, I don't have a lot of bar stories. I have a lot of drunken shenanigans stories. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of getting thrown out of places stories. <laughs> you know, like I've done a lot of drinking things like drinking around the world at Epcot, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, one time I got so drunk in Atlantic City. You got in a fight with Mickey or something? <laughs> I might have been asked to leave Canada. <laughs> I might not remember it, but yeah. yeah. So um, I was at the Caesars in Atlantic City, like the the casino. Yeah. And there was this area up, up upstairs where it has it has sand on the bottom of it, mm -hmm. and it has like like chairs, like you're on the beach, and you look out onto like outside. It's like this kind of swanky like hangout area. And I got so drunk, I went up there and then like threw up all over myself. <laughs> oh my god, I saw that picture. Yeah, I threw up all over oh. myself and all into the sand and stuff around me. And it was so sad, and that's one of my favorite places, so yeah. it's kind of like when a cat goes and like goes behind the dryer and dies. <laughs> I just went up there and just died, and like my friends came and like rescued me and stuff, and there was a picture of them pushing me out of the place in a wheelchair, and I vomit all over me, which you can show, it's fine. But I have the happiest expression, it's the happiest it's like I've ever looked. Oh. And Ugh. so, there's that story, yeah. but so all, my, a so I'm a mess. Do you have anything like that, James? Or um, I mean, probably the best things like that, I don't remember. So I don't have... Probably the best story is something that I have no recollection of. But um, the only thing off the top of my head that I can think of uh, uh, that I can remember was this, this guy walks into a bar. Sounds kind of like the beginning of a joke or something. Yeah. But, so this guy walks in. He's dressed like Elvis. And he's got the, you know, the white jumpsuit. Yeah. Like, you can't miss him. He just walks right in. Dressed like Elvis, and this is late night, and everybody's like, sees this guy walking, everybody just starts like applauding, like, yeah, Elvis! You know, and you'd think, if you walk into a bar dressed like that, you're looking for attention. Yeah. You know, you're, you're expecting people to react. Mm -hmm. This guy kind of just like, just shook his head and just went straight to the bar, like didn't want to have any piece of it or whatever. <laughs> it's like, okay, and then, the, the bartender, I think, like signaled for somebody to go to the jukebox and they put on a, an Elvis song or something. <laughs> I don't remember, it was Hound Dog or All Shook Up or something, but... Yeah. Uh, so everybody's like really like getting into it. Everybody's like just applauding this guy. It's like, yeah, Elvis, Elvis, <laughs> Elvis. And he's just like, just almost reacting like maybe like the way Elvis might really react. Like he was just like, <laughs> you know, I don't want any part of this. I'm just here just to get a drink, whatever. Yeah. He goes to the bar and orders a, like a, I, I wasn't close enough to hear what he ordered, but he ordered like uh, some kind of hard liquor. Because mm -hmm. the bartender comes out to pour him a shot. And he's like, wait, 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 wait. He takes out of his pocket, he takes like a, like one of those medicine prescription things. Oh my God. And he's like, asks the bartender to pour it into that. <sighs> Pours it into this thing. <laughs> We're all just like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What's with oh, this is he guy? storing it for later? I don't know. I mean, pour it in there. I mean, I, I, as I recall, he drank it and then left, and that was about it. Uh, did he say something like, just take my medicine, baby? <laughs> no, I mean, it was like, he almost seemed like he didn't want to play the part of Elvis. He just happened to be the part. So, like, he didn't... It wasn't a choice. It was just like, like yeah. Maybe that was Elvis. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. But if it was Elvis, why would he be dressed like Elvis? Like I don't know. It made no sense. Like no one would about... expect Elvis in hiding to dress like Elvis. Hiding in plain sight. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yo, I got a story about a bar. Mm. It's about a Tony's a pussy, and he kicked me out of his bar hey, because I hey. said Jurassic Park three sucked, and then Jurassic I Park three is great. Lost World's awful. Ah. Get out of my bar. Oh, fuck you, Tony. Get out your of my bar. bar. Sucks. I We're hate taking your bar. it outside. I hate your bar. Tony. It's time to not be nice. Bar. Let's go. I'm gonna spin kick you. Wait a minute. All along was this Tony's bar? Yeah. Oh, it says Tony's bar. <laughs> there you go.